Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. The week is flying by. Today I have quite a few things to do, but I wanted to show you something very new. I have been thinking about doing this for a while. As you know, I'm a big lover of skincare. I have seen a lot of benefits from me following the skincare routine that I do, but I am looking to take things in house. A lot of you already know I'm a science teacher, a chemist to be exact. So I don't feel like I'm stepping too far out of my comfort zone by doing this. I haven't been in a lab since I left my job as a teacher. But yeah, guys, I've decided to start to make some skincare products. Woo! I really invested some money into some equipment and some chemicals. So yeah, I am hoping to do this as part of a series. But today is the first day that I'm actually going to make anything. So we are starting off strong by making some hyaluronic acid serum. Let me know in the comments if there is anything in particular you want me to make next. But yeah, I am so excited, guys. Okay, so here is what we're gonna use. We've got some distilled water. We've got some glycerin. We've got a preservative. Of course, some hyaluronic acid and some digital scales. As I said, I have invested in some glassware. I have a 250ml beaker here, which I'm gonna use to mix the majority of the product. And then I have a small 50ml beaker here, which I'm gonna use to test my sample at the end. Obviously, safety first, I'm gonna wear gloves, guys, because we're dealing with chemicals. So I've got some basic household gloves here and I also will be wearing my glasses when I mix to make sure that I don't get anything in my eyes just word of caution I'll make sure to add the formula at the bottom of the screen but so far in the beaker I've only added one gram of the hyaluronic acid and three grams of vegetable glycerin and for those of you who don't know the benefits of hyaluronic acid is that it plumps up your skin we do naturally produce hyaluronic acid in our skin it's just that it does diminish the older that we get. How it is able to plump up your skin though, is that it absorbs moisture from our atmosphere. So you do have to bear that in mind. If you are in an area or you're from a country that is very dry or the atmosphere is very drying, um, you may not see much benefit from hyaluronic acid, but if you're in a country like the UK where the atmosphere is very wet, very damp a lot of the time, it can be really beneficial. I always make sure anyway to apply my hyaluronic acid serum to damp skin. It does help with the absorption. I use thermal water to do that, but you can literally apply it as soon as you get out of the shower or the bath, whatever works for you. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a preservative. Usually skincare products that you buy in the shop don't necessarily have a preservative in them, but because I'm making this at home, I need to make sure that my product doesn't go off or get moldy. So I have to put a preservative in there. The name of the preservative that I'm using is called Preservative 12. It's a really good all rounder because you can use it in liquids and you can also use it in creams too. So the content creator I got this formula from, she uses Liquid Germal Plus, but it's very hard to get a hold of that in the UK, but this is a really good substitute. So I'm gonna add 0 0.5 grams of my preservative and then I'm gonna add 95.5 grams of distilled water. Okay, so I've added my preservative. I've also added my distilled water. You'll notice that it is severely clumpy. There are a lot of solids inside of the beaker right now, but this will completely dissolve. I'm probably gonna leave it for a few hours so it can do its thing on its own without me disturbing it. And then I'll come back and show you. As I said, hyaluronic acid loves water, it loves moisture. So it's just misbehaving right now, but it will settle down to produce a crystal clear serum. And look guys, it's already starting to dissolve. While we wait for the serum, I thought it'd be really interesting to give you the numbers. So let's start with the most important thing, which is the hyaluronic acid. As I said, I will link all of these products down below as to where you can get them if you wish to purchase them, guys. But I bought this from a company called The Sopery and I bought five grams worth. I think the smallest amount you can get is three grams, but I bought five. I am using about one gram per serum, but I am thinking of putting it in some creams as well. So it probably will go a lot quicker than that. But hypothetically, we only use one gram for the hyaluronic acid serum. So technically this could last me for like five 
bottles worth. This five gram bag cost me £9.99. Work out how much this individual experiment has cost me. I divided that number by five, which gives us just under two pounds. Next up is the vegetable glycerin. I bought a one litre bottle. This will probably take me yonks to get through guys because we only used three grams for this serum, but we can use it in quite a lot of other products. It's a very good binder to use in skincare products because it's antimicrobial. So it will stop your skin feeling really dry, really ashy when you are using those particular products. For this whole litre bottle, it cost me £7.49. I divided it by a thousand, times it by three, in order to get how much it cost me to use this for this particular serum. And it was literally like two pence, the cost of using it in this serum this time around. So yeah, guys, really, really good ingredient, relatively cheap as well. And it does have fantastic benefits. The next thing we added was the preservative. You'll remember that we need this in order for our product to have longevity, i.e. not get moldy. <laughs> so we need the preservative to sustain the product, guys. This was £5.20, including VAT from Aromantic. I think the brand is. And as I explained to you earlier, I'll probably be using this in many other skincare products as well. This jar cost me £5.20, including VAT. We only used 0 0.5 of a gram in this particular serum, which cost me about nine pence. Again, another really, really cheap product. I don't think there's any way around you making your own skincare products without adding this. And for the price, I'm really not mad at it. The last thing we had is the distilled water. I mean, you can buy distilled water from anywhere. I think I got this one from Amazon. It is five litres worth. All of the skincare products you make will probably have distilled water in it to some degree. Why are you making things like body butters or creams? So I know I will definitely get through this. This brand from Amazon cost me £10.49. The reason why you have to use distilled water and not just regular tap water guys is because the distilled water has had all of the minerals taken out of it. So in our tap water, we have all the minerals and all of the metals still inside of it. And despite them being at really low quantities, when you're mixing chemicals, you have to be mindful that they will still have an impact. So you have to use distilled water whenever the formula calls for water to make sure that it is mineral and metal free. This five litre container cost me £10.49. I divided that amount by 5,000 because that's how many meals is in here. And then I times it by 95.5. I think that's how much I weighed out for this serum. So in total for the distilled water, I think it cost me 20 pence for me to use it in this particular serum. So yeah, guys, if you've been doing the math as I've been going along, you'll know that the 100 ml hyaluronic acid serum that I have made today has cost me £2.31 pence to make. Now, here's a little challenge for you. Go to your nearest boot, Superdrug, I don't know, wherever you get your skincare products on, and tell me how much it would cost you for 100 mils of it. I usually buy this brand of hyaluronic acid and I purchased it in the 60 mil size. The serum that I made today is only 1% hyaluronic acid versus their 2%. So you do have to bear that in mind. But I did calculate how much it would be for 100 mils of that particular product and it comes out at 26 pounds 33. So I am saving a load of money. Even if I was to increase the percentage of hyaluronic acid I put into my serum, it would still come to nowhere near the amount that I would be paying for it if I was buying it from the store. So yeah. Let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm back in the kitchen, guys. There's a little bit of a racket. I'm actually sterilizing the glass bottle that I'm going to put the serum in. I have used an old serum bottle that I had from Primark, I think. Um, all I've done is remove the label, given it a good wash in the sink. Now I'm sterilizing it in some boiling hot water. You can use whatever method you want. Some people might use Milton or some other sterilizing liquid. I would stay away from liquids as much as possible and just do it the good old natural way. Boiling hot water can kill a number of germs on its own. Just be careful when you're handling hot glassware and just make sure that they're fully cooled down before you actually put any liquid inside of them. Okay guys, it's been a few hours and our acid has completely dissolved down now. You can see that bar a few bubbles, the serum is nice and clear. It will be completely crystal clear by the morning. I have my glass jar that has been sterilized and sanitized. The final thing I need to do is test the pH of the formula before I transfer it over into the jar. It should be fine without any buffer, but just so that we're in the habit 
habit of testing because it is good practice. I'm just going to show you how I do that. I poured a little sample into here. It doesn't really matter how much you pour in. Just make sure it's enough so that when you dip the pH meter in there, the probe at the bottom is actually like immersed in it. We are going to switch it on. I bought this from Amazon. I think it was less than £10, guys. Not expensive at all. And you can use it in liquids, which is really important. I also have these universal indicator papers, which are a little bit cheaper. You get so many in the pack as well. So this box will go a long way. Um, I'll show you what it's like to test with the universal paper. You don't get an as accurate reading as you would off the meter. But you know, if money's tight, then these do work. If you look at the back, there is a guide for you to use. We wanna stay as close to the neutral side of things. So staying away from the reds, more or less in the green area, guys. We're gonna dip it in. And the color change should give us an indication of what the pH is. Okay, so this is our color change. If we compare it to the chart, you'll see that we are heading down the neutral line, guys. We are heading down a neutral line. But just to be on the safe side, I am gonna use my pH meter. I'm gonna stick that in, leave it for a few seconds. Okay, it is giving me a reading of about 7.6, 7.5. It is below eight, which is the top end of neutral, and it's above four, which is the end of the acidic range. The pH of our face usually lies between four and six. So if you get skincare products that lie between that range, then they're definitely gonna be compatible with the skin. Hyaluronic acid doesn't really fall in that. As long as it's below neutral, we're fine. But I just need to show you how you would check for pH in the future. Okay, so I've decanted our sample back into the main mixture. Reason why you take a sample out, guys, when you're testing anything using a pH meter, if it, for instance, wasn't cleaned properly or there were still any other chemicals on there, just so if anything goes wrong, we haven't contaminated the whole back. And also, if I did have to correct the pH for some reason, I could do it on that sample first, test it, make sure it's worked, before I then go into change the whole batch. I hope that makes sense. So here's what our little vial. We're gonna transfer it over. So I'm gonna pour it directly in here like this. As you can see, we've got quite a little bit left over. Here's my pipette going in and it's ready for labeling. Okay, so I've just labeled up my first jar guys and I'll just show you what it looks like. The way that I made the label though is I've got a Nimbot printer and I've used one of the templates that they have on the app. So I just substituted the information that I wanted on there. I'll show you how it looks when it comes out. So here's my little machine guys, here's my phone. And you can see this is the label, how it's set up. I'm just printing one so I can show you how it looks. So I'm just gonna press print. Let's change the density, make it as dark as possible. So I'll press print. And here is my label. I'm not gonna lie guys, I didn't know you could change the density. You can see that the second label that I printed is a lot more darker than this one. So I'm gonna take this label off and put the new one on. I know it's a tad bit wasteful, but the difference is quite remarkable. So anyway, here is my new label. And there we have it. Okay guys, so we are all done. Here is our hyaluronic acid serum. I think we can all agree it was very straightforward to make this. Just a reminder, it cost me £2.31 for 100 mils in total. I do have a little bit left of the ordinary to get through before I start using it, but I am really excited to add it to my routine. But yeah guys, let me know what you think in the comments and as usual, I'll speak to you next week.